After nearly two years of terror, with the end of Bealey crushed, the 5th Brigade was withdrawn. But the mastermind of their atrocities, Perrin Shiri, was about to go on to much greater things, and Britain would help him on his way. Perrin Shiri, above all, knew precisely what was happening. He gave the orders. Um, and uh, he, if nobody else, he deserves the world court. Um, the, the crimes committed by, by the 5th Brigade under his command were gross crimes against humanity. But this is not a world court. It's a state-financed institute of learning, one of the most prestigious of its kind in the world, and it's here in London. A place that promises access to statesmen and government officials. The British government knew that the 5th Brigade had committed serious abuses of human rights in Matabililand. It also knew that the 5th Brigade was commanded by Perrin Shiri. So what did it do? Did it push for an investigation of Perrin Shiri, press for him to be brought before a court? No. In fact, the British government allowed Perrin Shiri to come here to the Royal College of Defence Studies in London as an honoured guest. I think I'm right in saying that he was the first officer from the ZNA to go to the Royal College of Defence Studies. Um, and we had him down here for lunch one day because I felt it was, you know, I wanted to hear the news from home, so to speak. Um, and he came down here. Uh, we had a most enjoyable Sunday lunch and he charmed our other guests. Do you know what the end of Billy called him? No. Black Jesus. I'm sure. Because he was the bringer of divine retribution. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Um, they remember him as a war criminal. And that, yes. I'm just, I, I'm just wondering if you feel any unease about the kind of welcome he was given in this country, not just by yourself, but by the, the fact that he was he was brought to the, uh, to the Defense Studies College. Well, I, I think that all of these things, um, it's very easy uh, to, to, to question these sorts of things, but undoubtedly he was the man who was going to be important in Zimbabwe, and I think it was important that we should influence him positively in so far as we could. That's unforgivable. Unforgivable. He should not have been allowed into Britain. He should never have been allowed into Britain. I've no doubt that if you sat opposite Milosevic, you'd be a very charming man. He would no doubt offer you a glass of wine and have a, a chat about the weather. There was so much have been said about Hitler in the early days. You know, uh, Perenchi is undoubtedly a charming man, but Perenchi was responsible for the deaths of many thousands of people in Madagascar. Horrifying deaths, not easy deaths, horrifying deaths. <sighs> Perhaps Jack the Ripper was a charming man. Heron Shiri rose to the top of Zimbabwe's power structure, becoming head of the Air Force. Just two years ago, Britain came to his aid by selling him crucial parts for these Hawk 200 jets. Tony Blair himself approved that decision. Now the men London failed to confront in the past have come back to haunt Britain. When Robert